Hi guys, my name is Linda Jenkins and I am here again today to discuss with you our free training seminar, which is Chasing the Dream. Today's uh, topic is going to be tips on driving. Now this is actually going to be backing for getting you started. This is specifically for the new drivers that are just getting their CDLs. And so I'm hoping that this can kind of help you out with the information that you'll need, the basic information you'll need for backing. Some of the topics we're going to discuss today are testing time limits, uh, which is for your CDLA, your steering wheel method for backing, how to use your mirrors, because you've got more mirrors on a truck than what you do on a car, a trailer setup, how to set your trailer up for the best position in parking, and or for backing, and your dock doors and the related equipment. Again, I'd like to thank you for attending our course today. If you do enjoy our course, please remember to like, share, and subscribe below. If you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure you click the bell so that you can be notified of when we uh, upload our next updates. If you'd like to find us on YouTube, our YouTube channel is DOT, FMCSA Compliance Specialist. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at DOT, FMCSA Compliance Specialist at gmail.com. And again, I'd like to thank you for attending today's session. In today's session, we are going to talk about backing, getting you started. Again, this is for the person who are just getting started in their journey to, to obtain their CDL and what things they may encounter along the way. The topics that we're going to be discussing is CDLA, testing time limits for backing, that's for your DOT for your examination, your backing steering wheel method. This will help you out tremendously when you get ready to learn how to back up. Of course, everybody will have different um, areas of expertise. This is just a good general way to learn how to back up a trailer. The next thing we're going to look at is Get Out and Look. That's our GOAL program. Most big major carriers now use the GOAL program, which means get out of your truck and look at your surroundings. The next is Backing, how to use your mirrors so that you'll know which mirror is used for what. The next item is trailer setup for parking, docking, and dropping. It also will go over some of the areas that are tight so that you can kind of get an idea in your mind what kind of uh, places you might be going to if you're driving a van or a reefer. The next is dock doors and the related equipment, pieces of equipment that you may see at a shipper or receiver's location for what they're requirements are for you to be backing into their uh, docks. <clears throat> the next thing we're looking at is our uh, CDLA testing time limits. Now I've looked all over and this is basically in the um, federal regulation that I found throughout the different states. Um, yours may be a little bit different if they don't go by the federal guidelines, but most people are pretty much on board with the FMCSA guidelines now. So for straight back, you're going to be given an opportunity of seven minutes to complete your straight back, your offset biking. That doesn't matter if it's to the left or right. You're going to have nine minutes to complete that. Your parallel parking, you'll have 12 minutes to complete that. That's left or right. Your alley dock, which is the one that is most used uh, by people who are uh, driving the trucks, is going to be 12 minutes to complete that as well. So you have your straight back, your offset, your parallel, and your alley dock. Now you may not be tested on all of these. It may be a combination of these.
So let's look at the steering wheel method and what that means. If you look at the steering wheel here, I have the upper half in black and the lower half in red. And I did that on purpose uh, with a line in between. When you're dealing with the steering wheel method, you're going to basically half your steering wheel in two. The top half is where you normally drive, like in a regular car. The top half, wherever you point that top half, that's exactly where your car or your truck goes, correct? Well, when you're trying to back, you're doing right the opposite of that. So that would be the red area, the bottom half of the steering wheel. Wherever you point that to, that's where your trailer is going to end up when you're backing. Remember, you must use your mirrors on both sides and in the front if you have them uh, when you're doing your backs. The bottom mirrors, the concave mirrors, they're used to set up the alignment of the docking once you've hit your, your spot. So you use the top to get to and get your truck angled around the correct way. Then you get the bottom and that gets you straight up and down when it comes, you know, on that line, that yellow line that runs, you know, for you to back into most areas. The last thing is, is whenever you're taking your test, please, please, please remember to get out and look. Make sure that you've tooted your horn twice. You know, not the big horn, not the air horn, just the regular horn before you actually get out. Um, anytime you're starting your back, that's when you toot your horn. So let's look at that in detail so that you can see what that looks like when it's in action. So as I was telling you, uh, we're going to split the steering wheel half in two, and the first portion of this is um, the steering wheel, you're going to be turning it to the right, which means you're going to be backing that trailer up to the left. Okay, so if you all notice there, the first section, the gentleman has his arm turning to the left or to the right, and when he's turning that steering wheel to the right, notice how the tires are pointed toward the right. You have that pivot point at your fifth wheel, which turns your trailer to the left. Okay, so now let's just go all the way over to the right hand side of the screen. Let's skip the middle, <laughs> but on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see he's got his steering wheel turned to the left. When he's got it turned to the left, his tires in the front are pointed to the left. You have your pivot point at the fifth wheel, and that as you're backing pushes that trailer to the right. And then, of course, in the center, if you're doing a straight back, your wheel is a straight up and down, you know, front to back, and so that you can just drive and come straight back. Now, a lot of people, what they like to do, and I would suggest you is doing as well, is get you a piece of tape, like a piece of duct tape, and right here where I have this little arrow, and I'm going to circle it for you, okay, right here. That little arrow there, put you a piece of duct tape right here. And when you do, then you'll be able to actually know which way is exactly straight for your steering wheel because your train and your truck might be out of alignment. And if it is, it's going to throw you off a bit when you're trying to make that adjustment going backwards. So just that way you know exactly where your steering wheel is just by a quick glance. You know, use some neon yellow or some neon green uh, or hot pink tape just to, you know, as a crutch until you actually learn your steering wheel position if you're in a new truck. The next thing is, is practice, practice, practice. The more you practice at backing, the better you're going to be. The next thing is to seek the expert advice of someone that can help you out when you're backing. You know, um, if you're dealing with your compliance and your safety regulations, you don't really have to worry about that. But you do need an expert, somebody to help you with your backing process. Once you get that down, you know, comment below, like and share this out so that other drivers that are where you are or you're at, you know, they can actually find out more information. So that's all that I ask. If, you, if you're watching this video, please like, share, and subscribe for the free updates.
Now, if you're working with a major company, just like I said before, most major companies these days have the get out and look program. That is to prevent backing accidents. So basically what they've done as an industry-wide uh, kind of standard now is that they've asked all of their drivers to, you know, once you know that you're getting ready to back, get out of your truck and look. Look at your lane of travel before you begin your backup. You know, either that's when you're like pulling up, you can stop and get out and kind of look around. Once you get lined up and you're ready to go in so that you know that you've got enough space around your uh, trailer, you want to walk completely around your truck and trailer to, and to identify any obstacles. Do you have any poles? Do you have any wires? Do you have any logs? Or do you have any other trucks and trailers that are older on either side of you? You know, those are obstacles that, you know, any driver needs to look at before they actually begin their back. The next thing is check your clearance levels. You know, are your sides clear? Is your top clear? You know, 13.6 is our magic number for a, a standard trailer. Also, don't forget to look underneath. You never can tell. There might have been somebody that dropped a pallet out there and there's nails and screws and everything. Those are hazards for your tires. Check it out before you pull your trailer back there because you never know. Somebody might have swept their trailer out. If it rained, those nails and stuff could have came right into where your tire is going to be, and that's going to make you have a blowout down the road. So check that as well. The next is check for um, your position of the trailer. When you're wanting to make sure that you're going to hit that hole, you can't be standing beside the trailer to do so. You need to stand back about 15 to 25 foot away from your trailer so that you can get a good perspective of what it's going to look like from your seat up in front, okay? So basically that means walking, you know, before you get that trailer, the back of it, the doors into the hole all the way, walk back there about halfway down the length of what that little slot is that you've got to hit, what your hole is. That way you can look at the trucks that are lined up on either side of you. Make sure you have enough room for that swing so that you don't accidentally clip anybody when you're doing your turn to get into your hole. So do all of that and then you should be pretty safe on your back. The next thing we're going to be talking about is looking at your mirrors. You'll notice here I've identified the two mirrors that most people have on their truck now this is going to be both your passenger side and your driver side. Now I did not put the ones that's in the front on the bumpers and the reason is is because some trucks don't have those. But as a standard everybody's got them on either side, you know, for uh, the driver side and the passenger side door. The top mirror will show you the angle to get you into the hole. Notice there on the right hand side that you can see that your trailer is actually going into the hole where you need it to go into. So that's a good thing. Now, once you know that the back of your trailer is in your hole, the next thing that you need to do is check and see your alignment. Your alignment, if you look on the lower left-hand side over here, you'll see right here, okay, you'll see the white line. If you want your trailer and your truck to be straight, you need to use this bottom, this bottom uh, mirror to be able to see it. Um, for you to be able to see your curvature to make sure that you are going to miss your obstacle, let's say this here is your obstacle, so that you know that you're going to miss it, you'll use this mirror on top, okay? The mirror on top, make sure that you're working your angles correctly. The mirror on bottom, make sure that you're getting your alignment correct, okay? Now, the reason why I ha have this, um, slide in here is so that you'll know that 
you are going to be in some tight spots. Not every spot is always going to be easy to get in and easy to get out. If you are running reefer and you pull any craft load, then most likely you're going to be in the underground at some point. So learning to use your mirrors is absolutely necessary because each one of these are pillars. Okay, they're big, tall pillars right there and right there. And you're going to have to be able to maneuver in and around those and, you know, know how to swing wide. You know, like if you're coming from there, you're going to have to swing wide to get back into that hole so that you can get in or out of there. Correct. Another thing is, is, you know, sometimes you have holes and you can't see your loading dock back there. One of the things that uh, a lot of people put like the reflective tape back there, but not everybody, okay? So you have to know that that's a possibility, that they don't have the reflective tape. If they don't have a reflective tape, then grab you your um, flashlight and lay it down on the pavement back there. That way you can see where you're supposed to hit. Another thing is, is notice right here, this is a very, very hard angle to hit. And the reason is, is because look how, look right here. You see all of that little bit of space? <laughs> That's all he has. And if you're delivering in Chicago or New York, um, most likely you're going to have times where you're going to be hitting stuff like that. Um, another thing is, is, you know, when you're going to like a, uh, a railroad yard where you have to pick up where you have to pick up um, your trailer from a railroad um, which is possible um, notice how tight see right here notice how tight these trailers are these trailers are very very tight so you're going to have to be able to watch those mirrors even on after you get hooked up even if you're empty when you come in where you don't even, you know, where you're bobtailing. When you get out of that hole, you're still going to have to be very, very careful to watch your mirrors on your exit because you don't want to clip the side of one of these trailers as well as the back of one of these trailers. So just know that that's going to be very, very tight and it does happen. Um, your ideal situation would be this one. <laughs> this is your ideal situation, okay? Uh, this one here, you have plenty of room. You don't have anybody on either side of you, and you're just in and straight out. But that doesn't happen all the time, okay? Just be aware that you're going to have to know that your setup will determine how easy it is to back your trailer. If you don't have a great setup, don't try to force it get back and start back over there's no problem with that you know if you have to make a if you have to make a if you have to make a correction then most most companies would rather you make a correction than have the possibility of you hitting somebody while you were out there okay so just know that your setup that is your main main thing right there you know if you if you want to succeed as a driver, make sure your setup is always good. And if it's not, then start over. It's just that simple. Okay? Now, for you to also be successful, you need to know some of the things about the dock doors and the related equipment that a dock door will have. A lot of this is not covered by your school because they have an open area, like an open pit or an open field where you're going to be backing in and you're going to either be backing in to big uh, pillars or you're going to be backing in to cones, you know, to teach you how to do your backing but they don't teach you about the equipment that is available at your dock doors. This is called a bumper, okay? Uh, the bumper will um, be what you're gonna be aiming for. This is the most important thing. If you'll notice, 
each one of these dock doors down here below, see, they have bumpers. They have a bumper here, and they have bumpers here. They have a bumper here and here. All of those little black things, those are all called bumpers, okay? That's what you want to aim for when you're getting ready to dock, okay? You don't want to aim for these yellow lines all the time, because notice here, okay, this is a prime example. See where these, these uh, yellow lines are? If you were aiming for those yellow lines, you're gonna miss your bumper. Your bumper is put on either side of the um, the gate lift, okay, or the lift gate, okay. This lift gate is a plate that comes up and it sits down inside of your trailer. See how right here you can see this is a bumper pad here and here. And then you have your lift gate. This lift gate it actually raises up and then slides down and it goes on the inside of your truck so that the fork truck can travel back and forth over it, you know, without falling down in between. Now, this next thing here, this is called a lock. It's, it's your uh, DOT bumper lock, okay? When you back in to here, okay, and they look at it and they say, okay, it's lined up correctly then they'll push a button on the inside and this will actually connect to your DOT bumper and hold you into place so that while they're unloading you, your, tr uh, your truck and trailer doesn't roll. Another thing you might see every now and then is this. And this is um, to keep your, it's a, it's a uh, automatic chalk. Some people call it that. It's basically on a little bar. It's less like the other ones that you always see, but this one here is to keep people basically from stealing it. It's on a bar and you lift it in and around your tire and you can either be to, in between the two tires or you can just have the one. It just depends on how many tandems you have back there in the back. Now this one down here, okay, <laughs> I wish <laughs> that it could always be so simple. Okay, these are called laser lights so that you can always see your, you know, your landing spot, whether it's day or night. Most places don't have those. Okay, usually they're just a painted yellow line similar to this over here. Okay, see how they're painted. All right, um, those painted lines they actually um, guide you back, okay? But it's only a guide. It's not for you to actually always park with that yellow line. And the reason why I say that is because, see, if you went right straight down that yellow line, guess what? You've missed where their bumpers are. This is actually their bumper right here, okay? Right here, this is their bumper and this is their bumper. This is their dock. This is their plate, okay? There's their lock. See, if you went for pointing at this this yellow line, you'd miss it by about six inches because this is where you actually need to be because that plate has to go into the back of your trailer. Again, if you aimed for this, you would miss it. You need to aim for the little bumper plates, okay? So as a review, just to go back over everything with our Chasing a Dream series, again, this is a free series uh, given by DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist. Um, we went over the CDLA testing time limits for each way of doing backs. We also went over the backing steering wheel method. We also discussed get out and look, that's the goal program. We also talked about backing and using your mirrors. And we discussed trailer setup for parking, docking, and dropping. And lastly, we looked at dock doors and related equipment. So I hope that you have enjoyed our series today on tips on driving, backing, and getting you started. 
Again, my name is Linda Jenkins. I'm with DOT, FMCSA Compliance Specialist. We're located out of Fresno, California. Please remember, if you enjoyed this uh, series today, to like, share, and subscribe below. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure to click the bell so that you can get our free updates as we release them. Again, we want to thank you for watching. Uh, our YouTube channel is DOT, FMCSA Compliance Specialist. Please take time to visit over there and like and share this as uh, you can with other drivers. Again, congratulations on your decision to make the journey into uh, trucking. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed our series of Chasing the Dream. Thank you for watching.